Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your... And um, while I was shuffling this out, I have some messages that I'm going to relay first and then move on to this um, reading, okay? You have some amazing cards and it is so appropriate because we are transitioning into your solar return month. And um, I feel like there are amazing, amazing things that you can do with this energy. It's just a matter of you freeing yourself and you have somebody in here that's going to be helping you. You have a major player that's going to be the catalyst of change in your life in a very extraordinary way. The problem is you need to be, um, you know, be able to roll with the punches and to, you know, not resist the change, okay? Especially for those of you who have a lot of um, Taurus in your chart. If you have a lot of Earth in your chart, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, if you have um, difficulties transitioning, it's really important that you try to embrace this energy. It's going to guide you and help you glide and help you, you know, uh, fly over troubled waters, okay? So let me just relay some information. Um, the first thing is, I feel like you're watching somebody leave. You're watching somebody go off. You're watching somebody that you really, really care about um, move away. So for some of you, this could be like a colleague, uh, a person that you've worked with, who you've known for many, many years. And they're like, hey, I'm moving on to bigger, better things. And you're watching them and you're really, really happy. But it also is a gentle reminder of your current predicament. Are you happy? Are you successful? Do you want to also be able to change like them? Do you also want to grab opportunities like them? And then for others of you, you're watching somebody that you care about move away. This is somebody that you really trust, okay? Like um, if they say they're going to do something, they follow through. You never have to doubt them. You never have to question them. Um, when you give them something to do, they get it done. So it could be, you know, a colleague, a friend, um, a spouse. Um, I feel for some of you, this is somebody that you have romantic feelings for, but you can't say anything. So it's like, you know, coming from last month, it's sort of like uh, something clandestine or something that is not spoken about. Emotions are there. You really like this person and you adore this person, but you're watching them move away. They're going to be coming back. They're going to be coming back. And they're saying like uh, one lunar cycle, so that could be one month they're coming back. One year. I, I, I highly doubt that. It seems to me like it's a little bit more uh, a faster turnover time, okay? Um, while they're gone, you're going to be soaking a little bit. You're going to be like a stick in the mud and you're going to be a little bit like, what do I do now? You know, woe is me. Um, well, there are a lot of other things you can focus your energy on. Okay. So don't, um, don't play the victim and don't mope and don't soak. There's a lot of energy here to get a lot of things done. Don't waste it. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm feeling as well is, um, you're dealing with somebody, it, it, it seems like the foundation for, you're dealing with somebody who's very temperamental, like they're, they're very changeable. And I'm getting the, the, that lunar cycle where one day they like this and then the next day they're like, I don't like that. What are you talking about? I like this. So they're making you question your reality. They're making question your sense of, you know, reality, what's right and what's wrong, as well as what's real and what's not. So I feel like you're, it's really confusing dealing with them. And, and then, so that's one person. And then I feel like you're dealing with another person who's like your rock and your anchor, who's like your, you know, the, the, the pillar of stability. And you're trying to get to that person. You're trying to leave this one unstable person, changeable person. And you're trying to go to somebody who's a little bit more stable, who's a little bit more reliable. And the transition, there it seems like there's a person blocking your, your path. So I do feel this is going to be a major uh, month when it comes to important decisions, when it comes to what's not working, Gemini. You need to let go. And when you let go, you will have a lot of good things coming in, but you need to be able to let it go. And you need to, you know, not straddle the fence anymore, okay? 
you need to like let it go once and for all. Turn your back on it and move forward. Okay. So let's talk about this reading. I'm really happy for you guys. You have some really amazing starts. Okay. So the let me just talk about the cards. So first of all, we have here the Ace of Pentacles. This is new job, new offers that are made um, available for you. This is also I'm also seeing seeing like new business ventures, moving forward, starting something brand new. And for some of you, we have as well the Ace of Wands.、Um, this heavily deals with publishing, getting your name out there, getting a product out there.、Um, I am seeing a lot of lotions, a lot of skincare products. I'm also seeing as well. A、uh, new housing situation, like getting your real estate license or getting your bro, um, your, um, what are those people, the the ones that do mortgages, like the loan officers. So getting that under your belt, so that you can sell houses, so that you can flip houses, so that you can attend, um, those、uh, public auctions, so that you can get and purchase new property. So I feel like there's some major, major breakthroughs that you're doing for yourself. You're doing to better your circumstances. You're doing to improve your financial situation, and you're also thinking heavily about buying property. Okay,、um, what's tied up with it is I have here the Six of Wands and the King of Pentacles. So this is telling me this is like negative self-talk that you've been kind of、um, holding on to. And the first thing that I'm seeing, you know, you are a sign of duality. It's the twins, right? And、um, it's really hard for you guys to make a unilateral decision. You like to have another person to bounce ideas off of. You might not even listen to them, but it, it just gives you that sense of comfort to at least confirm that okay, the other person thinks like me, or the other person, you know, is giving me feedback. And I feel like for some of you, you've had a, a partner or a person in your life that was a little bit of a negative influence on you. They're like, "No, you're not going to be able to do that. No, that's too risky. No, you don't have the skills. No, you don't have the capability." So some naysayer type of energy in your life, keeping you kind of oppressed and keeping you dependent on them. And I feel like this is the month where you kind of break free from it, where you're kind of overcoming it, and you tell yourself, "I thought I needed them, but I can do it on my own. I don't really need them." They might be a financier, and you come into your own money, your own wealth, and you're leaving them behind. You might have, you know, share assets with them, like joint assets, houses,、uh, family, children. And you're leaving them behind as well because you're coming into your own sense of empowerment, and you're making these unilateral decisions to improve your life, and not listen to you know their their self talk, not being bogged down by your lack of self confidence because you were with somebody that didn't really support you emotionally or didn't really. Give you that boost of confidence to begin with. So I definitely feel you are moving on. You're progressing, and it's like now you're realizing that person has really kept me back all this time. I should have, you know, let it go a long time ago. I should have known that they didn't trust me, or I, I should have known that they didn't have my best intentions at heart, or I should have known that they. Dragged me down. They didn't boost me up. They didn't offer me that emotional support. And I feel like they have a a fear based reason for doing that to you. But I also feel like they have self serving motives as well. Okay.、Um, I feel for some of you, this is a business partnership where somebody like、uh, made a lot of promises and they never deliver, and you're like, I'm out of here. And then I also feel for some of you, this is a relationship partner. Where there was a lot of, you know, assets, joint assets tangled together, and you're like, "There's no way I can leave this relationship because I might lose the house." And now you're just like, "There could have been a custody issue," and you're realizing, "I'm not losing the house," or things are getting liquidated where you're dividing up your assets. But either way, you're coming out victorious and unscathed, and you're gonna be fine. So I feel like. The worst of it is over. The fears were there to prevent you blocking your way, but the fears were not real. Okay, so 
you're moving away to a really stable situation. And um, what's coming in as well is for many of you, we have, this is kind of like rebuilding your wealth, planting seeds for tomorrow, uh, making smarter investments, investing in property, possibly investing in stocks, bonds, whatever it is that's, um, and waiting for, for things to pay dividends, waiting for things to come to fruition. So I feel like you're pulling together all your resources. You're trying to have a better bookkeeping system so that you know how much assets you have, so that you can itemize things, so that you can keep track of things. And this is a card overall financial prosperity that's gonna be coming into the picture for you. I feel for many of you, it's like somebody's coming in with ideas and telling you, hey, it's a good time to invest in the housing market because there's gonna be a drop. And you're you're gathering your resources to see how much you have and then to see which property you can really invest in and I feel it is like that as well for stocks bonds as well and um, investment opportunities okay um, what it's also saying as well is if you are I'm sensing here this is screaming out to me new work like a new job that's going to be on the horizon you might need to make a snap decision you might need to leave your home travel go on this interview they're going to shoot a lot of questions at you and you're going to have to look at the situation from a different viewpoint okay kind of like don't give them that generic you know uh, interview question response give them something that is unique draw from your own personal experience what have you done the past seven years why do you stand out? Why do you deserve this position? And I feel like they're going to be really um, impressed if you can draw from your own personal experience. And then once you do that, you're going to be able to land this job. So we have things coming full circle. And either way, we have a lot of prosperity that is in the picture for you. Okay. I feel for many of you too, on the dating front, the Three of Cups basically indicates, you know, social um, engagement, social opportunities. And this is like a little bit more lighthearted, okay? Going on a first date, having a really good time, getting to know somebody in a less formal setting, being able to let your hair down, um, making like small talk and mingling and socializing. And I have as well an air sign. So this is an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. This is also you feeling a little bit uncomfortable in a mingling situation, which is really rare for a Gemini. But I feel like there are situations where, you know, if it's too personal or too social, um, you might be so career and work focused, you might appear a little bit like a stick in the mud, or you might not know how to mingle and socialize. And at the same time, you don't want to seem too vulnerable and too eager because some of you, you might have been in a marriage situation and then you're trying to date again. And you know, that's always awkward, right? Because you've been out of the dating environment for so long and now you have to do it. And it just feels like, what do I say? What's appropriate for a first date? What should I wear? How should I do my hair? Should I say that on the first date? Should I review that all that information? Am I revealing too much? Is it okay to drink that much on the first date? So you have all of these anxious, um, it's an anxious energies regarding socializing, regarding first dates, regarding meeting new people, regarding putting yourself out there. And I also feel for many of you, you have people that are flirting with you. In particular, I have this air sign here. This is somebody that's really digging you, but you know, they're an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Um, air signs have this kind of like a natural defense mechanism where they're really, really, it makes them so uncomfortable above anything else. They're so, so weird about guarding their feelings. They won't tell you how they feel about you until they know how you feel about them. They're so secretive and they're, it's almost like they're so ungenerous with their emotions. So until they know how you feel about them, they won't tell you how they feel about you. So 
this is a place of discomfort, and I feel like you know this person is coming in to kind of free you from it, free you from this perpetual state of waiting, of suspension, of discomfort, being stuck in a situation where you don't see a way out. They might also appear in the work environment. Where they're telling you about this job, or they're telling you about this new location, or they're telling you about a bunch of things like a a, a course of study,、um, an international like a travel, a movement, or something. They're giving you technical information, or they're giving you advice, or just a lot of things to consider. And it's like it's putting you in a space where you're looking at things from a different perspective. So I feel like you have a very valuable person in your life that's going to be very transformative, and they can help free you from a lot of the, you know, the the stagnancy in your own life. Is my career going the right way? Am I living in the right place? Am I dating the right people?、Um, it could also be a love interest, a love partner too. And I feel for many of you, you might be transitioning. I have an earth sign and an air sign, transitioning from an earth sign to an air sign. So.、Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The relationship might have been very, very stable, but you find yourself kind of、um, you find yourself awakened to the truth that this person might be a little bit too self-serving, and you're going out trying to you know make it on your own, trying to just focus on work and you know not really dating so much. And、um, I also feel there's something here about you know. Being very visible, you might have like a very high profile. You might be a high profile person where a lot of people know you. And dating hasn't been very successful because people know you're you're famous. People know your fame before they they give you you know the, the chance to get to know the real you. So it's like your reputation precedes you. And then, because you're so highly visible, you have to be extra careful and extra selective about who you date. And so, the relationship can seem very contrived. It can seem very staged and and not natural. And because of that, it's not spontaneous, and it just doesn't work the way that you want. And I feel like you have taken the time as well to to date. You have taken the time to date outside of your type, or to consider, you know, other people. And this is the month where. You have somebody that's very similar to you in in energies. They're careful, they're cautious, they're wise, and they're smart. And communication is going to flow really well between the two of you. And they're going to ask you a lot of things that will really debunk your expectations. And they're going to ask you a lot of things. I, I feel like the the communication, the mental energy is really strong and. Air signs have to relate on that mental level in order for the two, for you to kind of open up to another person, to feel comfortable, to reveal more of your emotional side. So someone is really going to kind of、um, cut you down from this space of discomfort. Okay, so they're going to free you from this prison. They're going to open up your eyes, and they're going to as well. Really help you see, help you see kind of like the world from a different perspective.、Um, I have some really good things overall, Gemini's, and I feel like it's a good month for you. You know, to try something new, grab that new job, think about a change in location. You have really in, immense energy supporting this move. Grab that new job. Make that new connection. Allow the. There is a person in your environment. They're very reliable, but I feel like the chemistry is missing. If you're not intimate with them yet, the chemistry is going to be there. It's just a matter of trusting each other first before the chemistry would develop. Give it a little bit more time. Don't be impatient. Okay. And then I feel like for some of you, you're used to having like these chemical-inducing relationships in the past, and they haven't worked out really well. So it's time to change your strategy, and and you know maybe not、uh, place so much emphasis on the physical, sexual side of it, but rather letting things kind of develop organically and slowly, so that the trust and the rapport is there before you judge the relationship. 
it's like the relationship should be a sum of all of its parts and not just you know this or that. Does that make sense? So let me just see. What is this Ace of Wands in the reverse? What does that pertain to? Okay. I have here the King of Swords and the Nine of Cups. And this is to clarify the Ace of Wands. First of all, the Ace of Wands is about passion and chemistry. And with the King of Swords in the reverse, and I feel like the King of Swords might be you guys. Um, somebody is not being truthful, okay? Um, so that means, and I'm getting like two different messages here, so I'm trying to see which one to say first. Okay, so, so first message, Ace of Wands, King of Swords. This is sort of like, lying to ourselves is the connection good I'm, I'm it's like you're staying with somebody because it's stable but there's no physical contact anymore like you're you're not really intimate with each other anymore and you're using other means to gratify yourself so that can be um other means so i'm not going to go into details but it just seems like you're lying to yourself Okay, and then the second message that I'm getting here is um, you're dating other people. You're going, you're, this is a card about overindulgence. So dating other people, seeing other people, trying to, you know, um, create this physical connection. Trying to, to figure out why, I'm not a why am I not able to recreate that physical connection with, an with an that person. And I'm dating a lot of people, but why am I not able to feel that spark, to feel that that sense of, you know, that chemistry? And one advice that I was told is um, when it comes to a lot, like really, really strong, intense chemistry, a lot of it stems from a soul connection. You have to have that soul connection first in order for you to have that really strong physical connection. The soul connection doesn't always mean, you know, that things are going to last. But it basically means you've known each other before. So in whatever capacity you've known each other before, it creates that sense of coming together now and feeling really comfortable, feeling like you know the other person's body, you know the other person's skin, you know the other person's movement, and it allows for the physical connection to take place. So. If you've been in a relationship and you're just like, oh, the relationship is stable, it's comfortable, I'm staying in it, but you're not feeling that spark, that chemistry, and you're seeking other avenues, other people to kind of jumpstart that chemistry, I feel like it might be a good time for you to really reassess your relationships. And then I'm also sensing as well, you know, this is the month where the chemistry, being able to have a physical connection with another person, it's going to happen. This is a wish card. And we have the Wheel of Fortune as well. So if you've kind of been ignoring it or just, you know, you're, you feel like, uh, my love life is never going to pick up. This is the month where it will. And you are going to meet somebody who's very similar to you, except... They're a lot more honest than you are, Gemini. It seems like they're a lot more honest, okay? So, whenever I see the king and the queen of the same suit, it's always a good match. And this is somebody where I feel like they're going to turn your world upside down and they're forcing you to be a lot more honest, to be a lot more clear, to be a lot more directed with what it is that you want. So I feel like they're really going to ask you probing questions and they're going to make you kind of re-examine your life and figure out what's not really working or what's um, what's holding you back, okay? Um, so that's what I'm seeing here when it comes to your love relationship sector. Let me see. What else are we looking at here? What else do we need to clarify? So let me look at the three of cups. What's going on here? Okay, so we have 
Nine of Cups again. For those who are single and dating, this is overall an abundance when it comes to choices, okay? And we also have Two of Swords. This is like being confused, not knowing which way to go, and also questioning other people's motives in the reverse position. You know exactly what direction you want to go, and you know exactly who you want to be with. So I feel like you've got somebody that's really captured this part. It's turning this situation around. It's making you feel like it makes you feel passionate so if that has been lackluster if that has been missing in the equation that's what's coming in for this month okay so it fell off the table seven of wands opportunities and choices but also um you might need to ward off some people okay so Make sure that you, you know, a lot of the times we uh, open ourselves up for dating and things like that. And we might not always meet the right people. And I feel like many of you are very polite. So you're not going to be like, you know, get out of here or leave me alone. You're going to entertain the person and you're going to try to be polite and put your best foot forward. Some people might not take a hint. So you're going to need to be a little bit more firm about, you know, leave me alone, take a hike. So you need to just maintain those clear boundaries, okay? And then on the, the other, on the flip side, if you are going on a date and within like the first two hours, they're telling you their entire life story, that's a breach of boundary. So you need to not entertain those people, okay? So please be very, very careful when you go out and about because I feel like you're eager to show your love and show your, um, show your affection. And the people that you, that might be drawn to you are too needy of it. And they, they, they demand too much of you. Okay. I wouldn't worry about it too much because we have this case where it's a good match, but I just feel like, you know, things can go awry because there are too many people involved in the picture. Okay. Um, are there any other messages that I need to relay to Gemini's overall? when it comes to career, work, etc. Let's see, this Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so this is a card overall about, you know, not doing things in a very dishonorable way. So that means um, lying on your resumes or even competing with, with people that you respect or you work with or even people that you feel, oh, they should get the job. I'm going to, you know, gracefully bow, bow out of the race. So I feel like, you know, not uh, being so cutthroat that you um, trample over other people in the in the process of trying to get new work okay so i feel like this is a a good card in the reverse we also have the death card which is major new transitions that will open up new doors for you and it's telling you to be patient it's telling you more opportunities will be in the picture so that means don't take the first one that comes in don't scramble for the first choice wait for the optimal um option to come into the picture for you um, the Ace of Pentacles with the Ace of Wands here, this is about impulsivity as well, you know, like being impulsive, taking the first step, and pushing things along when we should be waiting, okay? So this is like, um, don't jump the gun, um, be patient, hold back a little bit, get the lay of the land before you make the move, all right? So Geminis, um, I am really happy to see this for you. I hope the month is as prosperous as indicated in the cards. I hope that the reading is helpful, helpful for you guys, excuse me, and I wish you all the best, okay? Take care of yourself, and happy birthday and happy belated birthday for those who were um, celebrating their birthday in the month of May. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.